All right. So welcome everybody. This is again the STEM support webinar. Um, so we want to kind of put on this webinar for y'all to let y'all know of remote resources that you have access to as uh, EOP students um, who want to go into STEM. So this is kind of what our agenda is looking, right, looking like right now. Um, we have panelists from BSP, Cal Nerds, the Career Center, the Society of Women Engineers, Engineering Student Services, and also EOP slash EOP STEM. All right, and these are some of the questions that our panelists are going to be addressing and answering for y'all today. So you can expect that and look forward to that. All right, so we're going to start off with BSP first. We have Mario here with us. Hello, Mario. Hi, everyone. Oh, uh, does that mean I get to start? Or oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, can I see the, the, are you gonna flip back to the slides or am I just gonna just start going? I mean, I was just gonna flip through the slides, but if you wanna, you know, just tell me how to conduct and that's cool too. Yeah, sure. Is it okay if you uh, could go uh, to uh, my slides? Yes, do you want me to, do you wanna screen share? I actually do not have the presentation up right now at this moment in time. Uh, let's see. Um, let me try to let me try to pull it up. I'm trying to look for your your my bad, y'all. Uh, let's see. Oh uh, yeah, I just uh, I could screen share. I just pulled up the presentation right now. Cool. All right. Um. To me. I, uh, I guess everyone could see my screen. Let's see if I could uh, play it from where I'm at. Um, where is the? Let's see. I think you can press present on the top. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, cool. My bad for that uh, long-winded uh, trying to figure out things out and technical difficulties. Um, good afternoon. Well, good morning, everyone. It's only 11. My name is Mario Eusebio. I am the current program advisor and study group coordinator for the biology scholars program. And uh, here's a little bit about me. I'm a first generation immigrant. I was, um, I'm originally from the Philippines. I'm a transfer student. I transferred from Diablo Valley College in Pleasant Hill. And I transferred into Cal uh, fall 2013. And I graduated with a degree in integrated biology in fall of 2015. Uh, my main uh, goal is to become a physician, uh, hopefully down the line. And I'm hoping that I could talk to you all a little bit more about BSP. So let's see if I could just click on the... So BSP stands for the Biology Scholars Program. We are specifically a program that's located in the VLSB. We have a couple of offices. Uh, my office, the advising office is in, I believe, 2018 right across from our program director, Dr. John Matsui's office in uh, VLSB 2016. And BSP is a program that is meant to assist students who come from you know, low-income, first-generation, underrepresented um, backgrounds to basically, you know, uh, have a career in the STEM fields. And we provide, you know, multiple uh, variations of support. Uh, first of all, we have uh, advising uh, with myself, and we also have uh, peer advising. We have study groups for most of the prerequisite, for almost actually all the prerequisite courses uh, for uh, those who are interested in pursuing STEM majors. So that includes, you know, Chem 1A, Chem 3A, Chem 3B, Bio 1A, Bio 1B, and uh, Physics 8A. And we also are starting to do sort of study groups or tutoring sessions for upper division classes like MCB 102. Uh, we also provide different opportunities for networking. For example, we have, I just, uh, I, I believe I just shared with Sam, um, a work, we facilitate different workshops where we invite different alums from our program to come in and speak to our students. And we have a workshop this Thursday actually with one of the BSP alums, Dr. Shauna Tucker, who is going to be coming in to speak to BSP students. So if any of y'all who are interested 
and uh, attendee. I believe that um, I shared the, the flyer with you all. We also have opportunities for paid research opportunities and clinical shadowing opportunities. So one of those clinical shadowing opportunities is run through one of the programs that uh, the BSB has called BICEP, which is called stands for Biology Scholars Clinical Exposure Program. And what that is, is it's, we provide students with a one-week shadowing opportunity within the pulmonary and critical care department in the Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. And it's a way to expose students uh, who have not normally had clinical experience to the medical field. And so we have different other, we have other types of opportunities and research opportunities like that. And unfortunately, due to the, um, the pandemic, we had to not have a BICEP running this summer, but hopefully maybe in the future, maybe next uh, summer that this program will start running. And yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about BSP. Uh, if anyone has any specific questions they would like to ask me specifically, I guess. Anything on chat? Um, yeah, that's all I got. Any questions? Um, Try to keep it within the time frame. Yeah, if anyone has any questions they think of after the presentation, we will be sending out an email with everyone's contact info. So don't worry about that too. Yeah, I have um, my, I think I have my email on the slides as well. So if anyone wants to sort of schedule an appointment with me or reach out to me to talk more about BSP, about, you know, uh, pre-health or uh, just navigating their way through Cal, feel free to always email me and, you know, we can schedule a time to talk more about your individualized, you know, career path and your journey uh, in STEM. Uh, one of the questions that was asked was, uh, is there an application process for BSP? Yes, there is an application process. And unfortunately, we are not opening applications for the fall, but we may open applications for the spring. And if that is the case, um, you will receive an email or um, if you're part of EOP STEM or any of our campus partners, we usually blast that out and uh, let you all know that our application process is open. I'm getting a lot of... Uh, questions now. Does BSP provide any resources for help with research? Yes, we do. We provide you all with the ability to sort of uh, meet with individuals, uh, faculty members uh, in different institutions, our alums, to talk about their research. And then we also have coming up potential research opportunities that are paid for students that would be on a year-long basis. And if you visit our website, you can see previous, in previous years what types of research opportunities and research internships BSP has available for BSPers. No, there is no required major for BSP. Uh, you, could, you could major in pretty much anything that you want as long as you have a passion for the sciences and you demonstrate that in your application and there is an interview process. So, you know, a lot of our students, you know, you don't have to major in STEM to be part of BSP. And that's what I want to sort of uh, emphasize. Um, I think I answered that. There is no required major for BSB, major in um, pretty much anything that you want. And what are some requirements for BSP? Um, there's actually only really two requirements for the program is that you take, uh, you attend our all student meetings, which is a meeting that we have uh, once you're in the program, uh, once a semester, where we try to gather all current BSPers to sort of uh, meet with each other and as well as to talk about further programmatic steps and that's just one semester and the other two are required classes that you have to take once you are in the program which would be uh, IDS 96 and which is taught in the fall which is I believe introduction to biological sciences and the second one is MCB 15 uh, which is I don't know the course title off the top of my head but they're both uh, programs taught by our program director, Dr. John Matsui. And other than that, those are really the only uh, major requirements for to be part of BSP once you're in, but there's no uh, requirements prior. Just uh, fill out the application. All right, thank you. I think that's here. I think I should be, if y'all can see the screen, there's the website link and the contact info for BSP, so. Uh, Mario underscore BSP at berkeley.edu, because I don't think the underscore Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, because there's a line there. It's underlined. Now I could type it into the chat. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll post the slides afterwards too, or I'll send it out through email to everyone who attends. So, good question. All right, so now we're going to move on to CalNerds. I believe that. Yep. Let me just uh, get this up and running. Share screen. Everyone, uh, my name is Chris Noble. Um, let me just see if I can escape out of this. Sorry. I'll just go from here. So again, uh, welcome everyone. My name is Chris Noble. I'm the Assistant Director for Cal Nerds. Uh, it stands for New Experiences in Research and Diversity in Science. Um, and we're physically located in Stevens Hall, just south of the Bell Tower. Um, a lot of the magic has happened um, in our center there, but I think we've been able to transfer a lot of that um, over virtually uh, since uh, uh, this uh, coronavirus virus has happened since March. And uh, a lot of the things that we do or have had done in the past uh, few years helped to kind of ease that transition. Um, currently, we're a team of 13. This fall semester, that's Diana Lizarraga, the director, myself, and our student directors. And our student directors actually help to lead in a lot of the different initiatives and programs and workshops that we have uh, to create exposure for our community. Um, we are about three grad students and um, uh, uh, seven undergrads. And a lot of the magic happens with them. We really miss our center. Um, a lot of our workshops, our weekly workshops that we used to hold were in our center. We had a quiet study room. We had a, or we have a printing room where we have 3D printers and a large format poster printer for our uh, students that go out to present their research. And unfortunately, we don't have that. We'll eventually get there one day, but a lot of our students have access to all these different resources um, within our center. But some of the things, are not as tangible, but what we call is the buffet of opportunities uh, for our students. I'll just port it over to a simple slide. These are some of the things that a lot of our students uh, are, can be exposed to. They don't have to necessarily participate in all of these different activities and programs to be part of our community. Um, we're essentially here to um, help students in their transition to their STEM careers, whether that be academia, uh, government, or in industry. And, some of the things that our students uh, get access to are paid faculty mentor research opportunities, specialized tech training, um, graduate school preparation, career coaching, community building, and professional development. And a lot of this is targeted towards um, uh, targeted towards um, uh, non-dominant communities in STEM. So it's really important to have these resources for students to tap into. Now, one of the programs that a lot of the students um, uh, think of as nerds are our traditional programs that you apply to and that's our UC Leeds NSF camp and Bergeron programs and a lot of uh, especially for like UC Leeds and camp uh, the idea is to get students exposed to faculty mentored research um, and get preparation for graduate school um, most notably in the pre PhD um, pathway so if that's something that you're interested in we typically have these uh, applications uh, open in the fall uh, we have accepted our last cohort of uh, spring we tend to uh, release applications in the fall and do interviews in the spring semester. UC LEADS stands for um, uh, uh, Leadership uh, Through Excellence and Advanced Degrees in Science. And that is a two-year commitment. We tend to look for sophomore students standing, um, sometimes juniors, uh, to uh, learn about uh, research and um, get exposed to uh, your faculty network, uh, and learn about graduate school preparation. Uh, the CAMP program is kind of similar to UC Leeds. This one is uh, funded by the National Science Foundation. It stands for California Alliance for Minority Participation. And this is also to expose students in the pre-PhD uh, pathway in STEM. But we're looking specifically for students that identify as being African-American, uh, Latinx, or, and or Native American uh, uh, students in STEM. And they also get access to do uh, summer research and um, present their research as well. Our Bergeron Scholars Program, this one uh, tends to open up in the, I want to say late spring uh, semester. 
Um, it's a highly competitive program. Uh, we're looking for female uh, student, high-flying women in STEM, undergraduate women in STEM um, that are looking for um, a leadership component. And what we do is um, we uh, work with those students to find a mentor in their field. And usually it's someone who's a high, very high level person. And we look for these women mentors in those fields to connect them with um, a year long uh, mentorship. And they at least meet with um, their mentors at least two times a semester. Sometimes it becomes very involved. It depends on the relationship that they have with their, um, with their mentor. Sometimes it's shadowing for a day. Sometimes it's graduate school preparation in their field. Um, sometimes it's just to deal with difficult situations and ask how they did it. And um, these students, in addition um, to this mentorship, also get a, a nice scholarship. Again, this is something that's released in the, um, in the summer semester. We'll ho we're hoping to start this up again. Um, but that's uh, usually how a lot of students become involved in our programs over the years. But we also knew that um, students um, We've had students ever since opening up our uh, student center in Stevens that a lot of students would be showing up to our uh, workshops. And uh, we do um, offer uh, these fall 20 Friday workshop series. Uh, this has been traditionally open to our students in the program, but over this uh, past summer, we opened it up and we actually have uh, more students uh, from the UC system that attend, particularly targeted towards undergraduate students. And it's every Friday from about uh, 1210 to one o'clock. Um, some of them um, might have uh, opportunities in the afternoon, but they focus on STEM journey speaker series, um, our health and wellness, and our uh, CalFresh 101 and 102 workshops. Now the STEM journey speaker series, we bring back alumni from our program just to talk about their careers, dealing with um, everything like how to, um, things to think about in your career, dealing with imposter syndrome, um, it, just different uh, ways uh, how they apply to graduate school. Our Managing Your Energy series um, is essentially uh, dealing with um, health and wellness. So looking at different techniques and ways to deal with stress. And it's very important, especially nowadays with all the different challenges that we've um, had since uh, going uh, uh, you know, going to school remotely or working remotely. So uh, dealing with different uh, uh, avenues to kind of help in that. Um, also, um, uh, we also have a business core competency series where we try to teach the hidden agenda of um, getting prepared for your uh, STEM career, or how to best build your resume. And um, for our last uh, workshop that we had, um, this one was in the summer, um, we, we're still continuing in the fall, but just kind of chilling teaching students, like if they're applying to industry, how should you build your resume in a certain way? And this has also spun off into different um, topics, like um, possibly uh, how to interview um, in front of a panel, things of that nature. Um, another thing that we also run is a CalFresh 101 and 102 workshop, just to help uh, students get connected with that resource um, that's available, uh, especially uh, for students that have food security needs. So we run uh, these little clinics that just showcases what um, CalFresh can help students with and how to tap into it. We don't uh, do the application process. We usually hand that off to uh, the CalFresh folks, but um, it was our way of trying to make this accessible. Um, this is, uh, again, uh, these Friday workshops, uh, they're open to the campus at large. You know, we have uh, undergraduates and graduate students attending it. Uh, traditionally, this was UC Berkeley students, but a lot of students, you know, from like UC Riverside, UC San Diego have been attending. And we really want to make this known that this is also something that you can attend as well. You don't have to officially be in any of the NERDS programs to join in. It's just something that that's out there that we just uh, want you to know about. Um, some of the other things that we also have available are Python coding boot camps. Those are also free. Uh, we have one coming up. Uh, next month and I'll change it over to the slide in a bit. But this is just to um, provide students with uh, coding opportunities and in any field. You don't have to necessarily be in STEM, you don't have to be in Kellner's program and this is absolutely free. Uh, this is something that's taught by our student directors. It's a four hour workshop. It's in very intro. You don't have to have any experience in coding and it also um, dovetails into a second workshop that's intermediate just to go over a variety of concepts of coding. Um, 
So that's available. And a lot of the workshop series were initiatives that were brought on by our student directors to kind of help guide um, some of the, the needs that we needed to highlight and skills that students that they should be thinking about. So it's a big up to our, uh, our student directors for helping to guide this. Um, some of the other things that we also worked with uh, the, over the summer, we have our online, online, sorry, alumni online mentoring program where we've invited um, a lot of our alumni and community members that have been involved with our program to do one-on-one -on -one mentoring with our students. And that's going over application process, um, dealing with um, difficult situations uh, or navigating uh, professional relationships, leadership styles, uh, things of that nature. And I think this is something that's been uh, pretty successful. The, a lot of our, the students that participate in this are students from our programs. And one of the big things that we just released, um, maybe I could just escape this, uh, is STAR, STEM Training and Resource Guide. Um, yeah. Let me go back. I can open up the website. So this is something new that our team at Kellner's was putting together. Let's see if I have a good time. Um, it's what we found over the years is that sometimes students found out about resourcing on campus is too late, even within our program, um, specifically students that wanted to get into UC Leeds, but they were almost a graduating senior and they just never knew about us. There's a lot of great things that are happening on campus um, that STEM students, I think, should know about before going. And um, it's a database, essentially, of all the different programs and communities, uh, student groups that you can uh, tap into. We figure the earlier that you know about this, the better. Um, so this is something that you can actually uh, search out yourself, uh, start.berkeley.edu. I'll show the link um, later on um, my last slide. But just different um, things that just maybe you weren't aware about um, African American Student Development Center, American Indian Graduate Program, um, just everything. And so whatever keyword that you're looking for, um, you should be able to uh, search it out and see what programs are out there. And this was kind of the brainchild of our, uh, our director, Diana Lozaraga, who put this uh, really wonderful resource together uh, to showcase all the different talent that's on the Berkeley campus and you know, all the excellent resources that you can tap into. And the sooner that, that you know about it, the better. So we have other things, STEM role models, a blog built into it. And some of these things that we're still building is uh, we just launched it uh, in August. So it's still um, in transition and we're hoping to bring in uh, more programs. I don't think we captured every program that's on campus uh, that uh, we know about. We know that there's still some out there. So it's still um, uh, being adjusted. So that's out there. Um, let me get back to my... Uh, slide sorry i closed it um so that's been kind of biding our time uh some of the you know upcoming events that we have we have our uh, fall series workshop with uh, naomi davidson this friday and that actually has two workshops one at 12 10 and one at 4 10 you're free to attend so if you're interested in joining on that you can email me and we also have the intro to python coming up next month um, this is, again, the intro uh, series. It's taught on Saturday and Sunday. This is October 3rd and 4th, and they both start at 10 o'clock for our series. It's free to attend. Um, this one, I believe, is open up to undergraduates and graduates. Um, sometimes we have specific focused um, uh, boot camps that are uh, geared towards different uh, communities, but this one is open. So if you're interested in that, reach out to me and I'll connect you with our student directors who are helping to plan that initiative. The CalFresh 101 and 102 series is also starting. Um, but I don't have the dates for that yet, but um, if you're interested in learning more about that, feel free to um, reach out to me. And um, more information and updates, ways to connect with us, um, calnerds.berkeley.edu is our website, is our main website. Again, the star.berkeley.edu website that has the resources, uh, the various STEM and uh, campus resources. And um, we also have just started a newsletter. One of our student directors, uh, Nick Melamed, um, is it just kind of been showcasing our events and our communities at different workshops. So if it's something that you want to get plugged into, uh, you know, again, reach out to me. My name is Chris Noble. Um, my email is cknoble.berkeley.edu. And my work cell, um, do so friendly text me at that cell, call me. Um, I'm usually available 9 to 5, um, Monday through Friday. So please feel free to reach out to me. And if there's any questions, um, 
be happy to answer. Yeah, I think there's one quick question. Um, where can I find the different paid research opportunities you mentioned? Well, within our program, so if you're looking to learn more about the programs where we do paid research, specifically CAMP, UC Leeds, and even our Bergeron scholars, you can take a look at our website, uh, calnerds.berkeley.edu. And um, if you look at UC Leeds or Bergeron, or sorry, UC Leeds, Bergeron, and um, CAMP, we usually have our applications up there. Our UC Leeds application is also on the Berkeley uh, 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 research, uh, resource guide at research.berkeley.edu. And they also have a, a wonderful list of different um, research opportunities, uh, paid or otherwise, that's listed there. But if you want to um, ask more specific questions in regards to UC Leeds or CAMP, um, if you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me, I'd be happy to talk with you further. Yeah, and someone else asked, when does the CalNerds application open? It tends to open, well, for our UC Leeds and CAMP, it tends to open up in the late fall. Um, things have kind of adjusted, I think, with coronavirus, and we're trying to also kind of, uh, kind of time, time everything. But I, I'll just kind of throw that out there. It's usually late fall, so check on the website uh, for any uh, updates. Um, and if you have any questions or if you don't see anything, feel free to reach out to me. All right. I guess now we will move on to the Career Center. Give me a sec to pull up the slides. Oops. All right. So we have, I believe, Joe and Irma from the Career Center we're going to be presenting right now. Yeah. Hi, my name is Irma Moreno, and I'm the Pre-Health Advisor for the Career Center. And a little bit about myself. I'm a Cal alum, former EOP and transfer student. Um, I believe Joe Scullion, my colleague, is also um, on the um, on the call here, the Zoom call. <clears throat> but um, we have uh, various counselors that work with STEM students at the Career Center. It's not just Joe and myself. Joe and I do the pre-health advising. So we work with students in the um, both undergrad and grad students in public health. We work with the pre-med, pre-vet, pre-dental, pre-pharmacy, optometry, nursing, and pre-PA, just to name a few. But we do have other um, counselors, uh, Jen Racklin, who works with students in the Rouser CNR College, um, Integrative Biology and MCV majors, <clears throat> Mike Harris and Rave Hitt, who advise students in engineering and computer science, and Rachana Bias, who advises students in the chem department. Um, in order to meet with any of us, you would have to activate your Handshake account if you haven't done so already and schedule an appointment using Handshake for a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment. We don't meet with freshmen um, at all in the first year, we, um, but we do make all our programs, workshops, career fairs available to freshmen. Um, and we are available to freshmen during drop-in hours. <clears throat> and all students are welcome to attend any workshop and other programs that we have. Um, our website contains many resources that you would find useful from resume and cover letters. We have a YouTube channel that provides a lot of information and past workshops that we've held. Um, we have um, informational interview questions that you might use in interviewing a former alum or someone in a career that you're thinking about. And we do have a list of prereqs for all the professional schools and grad school programs that I mentioned. Um, Jen Racklin serves as the counselor for the USP program, which is the undocumented service program on campus. Um, to schedule an appointment, if you are a USP student, you would have to email her directly and state in your email that you are USP because that is regardless of the major and she would reach out to you and schedule an appointment that way. Um, so as I mentioned, um, Joe and I both hold office hours. Um, she holds office hours on Tuesdays from 10 to 12 noon. And then I hold office hours on Fridays from one to three and you're welcome to um, check into our website to find um, the Zoom links for those. Um, then we also um, virtually what we've done um, since we moved to this virtual platform is that we have um, 
what is called the virtual um, office, so virtual front desk. So any student can go onto our website and log in from noon to four, Monday through Friday. Uh, you can talk to somebody at the virtual front desk or see a peer advisor. We have peer advisors that can help you with quick questions or resumes and cover letter review. Um, we also, um, during our drop-in hours, just a quick reminder, those are short appointments. It depends on how many people we have waiting. If we don't have anybody waiting, Joe and I can extend our appointment a little bit, but we try to keep it to 15 minutes and shorter than that. Um, currently, we have two workshops coming up that might be of interest to you. Um, one workshop is on how to find some clinical and volunteer um, research opportunities as well on campus, and that's going to be um, October 7th. Um, you can sign up on Handshake for those workshops. And then the second workshop coming up is October 13, which is a um, workshop on the various careers in public health. Since public health is very interdisciplinary, there are various careers that you can um, gain from having a, a major in public health. So we'll have a workshop around that. And then in November, we'll have a, what do we call the fireside chat, which is one hour where we'll have a nurse um, who works at Stanford and former Cal alumni come and talk about her path to um, nursing and what it, what it took to, to get to the job that she has now. Um, are there any questions? Okay, then you can reach us. Um, I, and the slide has our um, website address and you can reach me. I can always put my email down here on the chat um, if you would like to contact me. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that presentation. I think we'll move on to the Society of Women Engineers. I believe Zoe is with us today. Yeah, hi. Um, my Wi-Fi is a little bit not great today, so sorry if it, it cuts out a little bit, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, hi, I'm Zoe. I'm the president of the Society of Women Engineers at Berkeley. Um, you can move on to the next slide. I don't know if I'm delayed. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm I should say a little bit about me. I'm a fourth year studying electrical engineering and computer science. Um, and I've been involved in the Society of Women Engineers since I've been a freshman. Um, so this will be my fourth year now. Um, and as an organization, the Society of Women Engineers, which we also abbreviate to SWE, um, we're a national nonprofit organization with the goal of you know, highlighting the achievements of women as leaders and engineers and supporting those women. Um, in their careers as engineers, um, as like a generally underrepresented uh, group within the field. Um, so at Berkeley in specific, we have like 150 general members and, and really general membership is just showing up to events. Um, so anybody can be a member. Um, you don't have to be an engineer, you don't have to be a woman. Um, you just like, we want people that can support um, our mission. And so yeah, if you show up to an event, you're a member. Um, we have 34 officers, which are um, more involved members of SWE, and they all host their own separate events um, in the different sectors. And so each of those officers generally also have a committee, which is where a lot of our general members like get involved more so that they can maybe become officers later. Uh, so the four like main sectors that we have, the first one is social, and social has everything to do with um, you know, just like meeting new people, um, you know, this semester virtually, we've been trying to do like, like a Zoom brunch um, and like trivia and stuff like that. Um, we also have corporate, which is like our professional development sector. And so we partner with a lot of companies that are interested in recruiting our students and we host like info sessions as well as um, a professional development month um, happening in October and a very large um, career fair event called Evening with Industry, which is also going to be happening in um, late October. And then we also do outreach, which is like K through 12 outreach. So working with um, younger students all the way from kindergarten all the way through high school, um, like introducing them to engineering and computer science um, through like weekend events. And we also have our like newer sectors, which are like our advocacy and our equity and inclusion sectors. And so advocacy, advocacy focuses a lot more on um, like policy related um, facets of STEM. So every spring or 
more or less hopefully we'll see this year um we we fund a trip like national suite has a trip called congressional outreach days where we actually like go to dc and um, we advocate for policy to support like stem and women in stem um and then in the fall we usually focus more locally especially like um in connection with like the asuc um and you know this semester is an election semester so we'll be hosting some events centered around that as well um and then our equity and inclusion program is more based on you know um hosting workshops for things like imposter syndrome or you know like um understanding what it is to be an ally and like how you can be an ally um like also trying to create a very inclusive space both like within SWE and out of SWE like for the general um, engineering community and then our new one that I didn't put on here but we're starting something this semester is our transfer outreach program so we have an officer dedicated to creating like a very um, open and welcoming space for our engineering transfer students which um, there's not a lot of women in engineering and there's especially not a lot of women in engineering that are transfer students and so we want to make sure that we can be as open and um, available to to that population as well. So we have a bunch of committees still open. Our main committee app closed, but we have a lot of committees within um, outreach as well as transfer transfer outreach um, that are still looking for members. So you can connect with us on like our website or Facebook or Instagram. And we also have like a weekly um, swing mail if you're interested in learning more about what we do and how to get involved. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I have. I'm happy to answer any questions. I guess any last call for questions? I don't see any so far. Um, all right, so thank you for the presentation. We're going to move on, I suppose, to engineering student services. So Marvin is with us today. I believe he'll be sharing his screen. That is correct. Thank you, Maya, for having me and thank you for inviting us to present and share what we do for engineering students. Um, I should have somebody joining me, one of our students, uh, peer advisors should be joining me in a minute. So um, somewhere along the way, she'll, um, she'll join the conversation. But in the meantime, I'll get started with the slides. And let me see if she's there. Not quite yet. Okay. Um, all right. So let me share my screen. And um, I didn't quite get the memo that it was um, this short. So I'll have to race through our slides. Uh, we have quite a bit to share, so I apologize if it's a lot. But thank you again. And so we are um, Engineering Student Services, and uh, I represent one part of, the, of Engineering Student Services. So I will tell you. So first of all, welcome to Berkeley Engineering for students that are on the call. Um, as you see me on the left there, I'm, I'm Marvin Lopez, and I'm Director of Student Programs, uh, the Student Program side of Engineering Student Services. My peer, uh, Sharon Mueller, is the Director of Advising and Policy, which is the other half of Engineering Student Services that supports, that we collectively support all undergraduate students. Uh, where are we located? Uh, in normal times, we would be at uh, Bechtel Engineering Center uh, over there in McLaughlin in the northeast corner of campus. And you can find all that we do at engineering.berkeley.edu slash students. So uh, a little bit about advising and policy, and I'm hoping that Afton will be on shortly to tell you a little bit about what advising does. But basically, um, advising and policy does exactly as the name implies. They provide advising and policy uh, counseling to all our undergraduates. So they provide support on anything around their academic program, their academic um, progress, uh, degree checks, uh, classes, majors, adding, dropping classes, changing majors, um, changing into the college as appropriate. So anything to do with their academic program and progress is the academic, the, the advising team. And these are our awesome ESS advisors uh, who support all undergraduates. They have a case of about 800 students per, uh, per advisor. They're super busy as you can imagine, but I know them all personally and they do an amazing job of supporting our students and guiding them through all the challenges and the, the, uh, the nuances of a successful uh, engineering career. And I see that Afton is on, hey, Afton. And just in time, we have uh, peer advisors. So our engineering, uh, our ESS advisors provide, um, you know, as it were, professional advice, um, you know, a, a, cadet, a staff advising, but we have peer advisors who are also engineering students who provide support to students. So Afton, if you can say a few words about that and kind of introduce yourself real quick. For sure. So hi, everyone. My name is Afton Maryland, and I'm a senior in EECS. 
and I'm also a peer advisor for the College of Engineering. So I guess peer advisors were just a way to get advice from someone like currently in your position. Um, so I was a freshman three years ago. And so if you have any questions, forms, deadlines, or even just like unit help, like we'll try to help you out best way we can. And you can reach us on the Berkeley Engineering website under advising and counseling. Awesome, thank you. And I asked uh, Afton to join us because besides being a peer advisor, Afton is also part of the prep program. Afton has also been a, an instructor in the prep program. She's a regular at the Center for Access to Engineering Excellence, so she can give you the entire student perspective of what it means uh, to join and take part in our program. So uh, she's a Swiss Army knife of support for all, all of you out there. Uh, from a student perspective, this is the, the advising world in engineering. So there's you know student in the center, and we in ESS provide ESS advisors that, again, help you with your academic and, uh, um, and progress on the academic side and peer advisors who are students who help you with that. But you also have department advisors in each of the departments who, are, who provide support more at the, low, at the specific department level. So specific classes, um, perhaps substituting classes with others, and you know, those kinds of spe uh, department specific questions. And then the faculty advisors are you know, faculty who can uh, advise you more at the, the sort of the big picture. Um, opportunities for research, for careers, and sort of um, the major in, um, in more deep or you know more broadly. So, um, so we think that across these this universe of advising, um, you should have all the support you need on the academic side. And then on the co-curricular side is my team, is the programs team. So as I said, I'm I'm the director of that side of the program. So there's my email, Lopez at Berkeley Edu. If you want to make an appointment with me, you can go at the my Bitly uh, slash hang with Marvin and make an appointment Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursday mornings uh, for a 30-minute 30, 30 slot. Um, just to give you some context, I am also a first-generation professional, first-generation college student. I'm also an engineer. I have a CS background. And most of my career has been in industry until I came here five years ago um, because I, myself, am a product of these, these very programs. So it's, you know, it's, it's cool to now be sort of full circle back um, doing the, providing the programs that got me through school. So, um, so it's kind of a joy to be doing this. Um, what we do is really we, we provide um, support through what we call the four C's, uh, providing, first of all, community, uh, above all, in, what we in the programs that we provide. Um, capital, the cultural, the social, professional capital to navigate Berkeley and beyond. Um, collaboration, and this is, these four pictures are supposed to depict that. Um, collaboration that we instill and facilitate students, not just working together, but really teaching each other and rising together ultimately leading to confidence, the confidence to achieve all of the great things they want to achieve as engineers. So that is at the heart of what we do and how we do it. Um, this is the programs team, so in, in Zoom version. So there's me in the center at the top there and just kind of going around um, on, let's see, on my left is, on my left, well, on the screen left is Dr. Sonia Travaglini, who's our newest addition to the team. And she is a, a PhD in engineering with a passion for education and she's a uh, learning and success specialist. And she's putting on workshops and uh, working with students in, uh, in groups and in particular our, our target students, uh, specifically on academic success workshops and presentations. Um, Tiffany Reardon, who many of you may know, she's our uh, associate director for all the engineering excellence programs. So prep, T prep, uh, scholars programs, deep dives, et cetera. Um, going to the bottom center is Nicole McIntyre, who's focusing specifically on transfer initiatives. We're building out um, what we already have, an extensive portfolio of support for transfer students, so we're doing more of that. Uh, Tracy Sierra is our offers manager and Zoom experts, so all, because we're all remote now. Everything we do and everything we have, we offer remotely. She's taking care of all that. Uh, Claire Marie Coy in the upper left, she's managing our two mentor programs. So we have a mentor program for first generation students um, as freshmen, and then a new mentor program for transfer students. And we're building those out to expand not just the, the presence of both freshmen and transfer students, but also to pair students with professionals and faculty as our next phase. And what we call the ES Squared program, the Engineering Scholars and Engaged Scholars programs, to explore the intersection of technology and engineering and social impact and social justice. So who do we serve? We serve uh, first generation students, low income, underrepresented students, women, Transfers, we, uh, as I said, we're building out uh, our significant portfolio transfer support. 
veterans who are often often comes through the transfer community, LGBTQI+, but ultimately we do support the entire COE student body. So much of what we offer is available to everyone. Um, so what does that look like? Um, our excellence programs that I mentioned, the prep and T-prep programs in the summer, our summer bridge programs, our scholars programs that's, that follow the prep program in the summer, these happen during the school year and these are specific to each major. Uh, deep dives for 17 classes now, um, anything from uh, uh, Math 1A, 1B, to Chem 1A and uh, Computer Science and such, and others. Uh, we have a host of academic programs. Uh, we have free tutoring for all, um, over, all, over 40 classes now. Uh, we would have two tutoring spaces uh, in 227 and 240 Bechtel, but they are now both available virtually. Uh, we have a lending library of things like laptops, calculators, uh, textbooks, and a success closet of uh, professional attire that students can check out and borrow for interviews and such. Uh, as I mentioned, the two ten the transfer programs, ES squared, all of all of which is available virtually. Uh, we have professional um, development, professional um, leadership programs, things like the etiquette dinner you see a picture of here that uh, obviously we don't have we won't have for a little while. Uh, we have a career conference that we do at the beginning of the semester in partnership with the career center, and a number of workshops on professional development, largely with the career center, also through me because my background is uh, through recruiting and engineering. Um, everything from the elevator pitch through LinkedIn, job offer negotiations, mock interviews, et cetera. We bring in a number of companies like Apple, GM, Boeing to recruit students. And our newest addition is our GLOBE program partnership. So with the, with the GLOBE program, where we expose students to uh, international opportunities. Um, just last year, we went to the Philippines and Singapore. We were supposed to go to Taiwan this past uh, spring, but of course that didn't happen. And we hope to do more of that um, as we go back to normal. We also provide Leadership development for, our, in particular, our student organizations, and in particular, our diversity student organizations. We work very closely with SWE, HES, BESA, Enable Tech, uh, Phi Sigma Rho, to name a few, on things like support for the diversity conferences, the regional conferences, uh, guidance for uh, uh, succession planning and such. We provide our leadership program, which is our retreat in the winter, which again, won't happen this winter, but normally would happen uh, up in the Redwoods. And we do provide support for all 80 plus student organizations, everything from funding to leadership development. And one of the things that we're doing more of is partnering with ESC, the Engineering Student Council, who represents the entire student body of engineering uh, in creating a more inclusive and more welcoming uh, climate um, of student organizations. And our final pillar, and certainly not the least, and, um, and as you heard earlier from Cal Nerds, is something that's becoming more and more important with our students, is wellness. So we are partnering with, again with ESC, with our psychological services team and our brand new club in the college, the Engineering Wellness Club, who's themselves you know, a student organization focused on engineering wellness. And we're providing, um, in addition to workshops, in addition to services from the CAPS team, things like um, yoga classes, uh, nutrition information, that sort of thing, um, to help students in, to keep in mind that, to help students keep in mind that these are the four pillars that make them successful, that, will, that they need to address to be successful academic success, professional leadership, and wellness are all part of the conversation. So in a nutshell, that's what we have. Um, come see us for vir uh, virtual advising. You can see the, the link there to our virtual front desk for advising. And for the Center for Access to Engineering Excellence, you see the link there where you can um, sign up or you come see us for tutoring, 9 to 9, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday to Thursday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, as I said, all free, um, over 40 classes. Um, and there for the taking. So thank you again, and uh, any questions that Afton and I can address. Whew, that was a lot. All right, we have one question from somebody. They asked, can someone only join if they're in the College of Engineering? So, you know, some of the programs are targeted to engineers. So prep, T-prep, um, you know, scholars programs are engineers, are only for engineers. Things like uh, tutoring, come see us. You know, the tutors are there, they're free, they're ready to go. So come see us. Um, all the workshops that we do around, you know, especially in, in a virtual world, uh, they're all available for, you know, I don't really care um, whether engineering or not. I think if, if you need the support and we have it, um, let's, you know, take advantage of it. So go to the website. Um, and I think I mentioned at the end that uh, engineering that birthday to use slash students. And if you see something that interests you, take advantage of it because we want to make sure that you succeed uh, except, you know, the, the programs that are targeted and cohorted for students who go into the, through the engineering classes together, you know, 
that's a little different. But the ad hoc support for workshops, for tutoring, for things like that, not at all. Come see us and we're happy to support you. All right, and then to address the previous question, yeah, we're, we're gonna be emailing all the slides um, so then y'all can have them too and have everyone's information. Um, all right, any other questions? Any other questions? Can we be can tutored we be tutor? today? <laughs> yes, they are tutor. There are tutors right now waiting for you. So the exactly what you know what classes and maybe Afton can speak to that how this works. But the exactly what classes um, are available. You know, there's a schedule on the web on the link that I put up. Um, I'll just put it here. Engineering. That first. So at Berkeley EDU students and through there we got it right um, the link that I put in the wet in the chat box through there you can find the what's called the virtual CAE link and through there you can see the schedule of tutoring uh, and what classes are available when and whenever the that tutor is available for your class that you want you just go on virtual the virtual front desk and they'll take care of you so am I right Afton yeah you are correct the right. assistance will get you to whoever you need right and if it's a subject that you're interested in that we don't have a tutor for or the timing doesn't work, let us know. Um, if we don't know, we can't support you. So let us know what you need and we'll make it happen. So, and there you go. All right, thank you. So I believe now we are going to move on to our final presentation. Oops. All right. So we have Sam with us, who's going to be representing EOP and EOP STEM today. Yes, welcome everyone. Um, first, I just want to say a huge thanks to our panelists who have joined us in um, this webinar. It's so great to see your faces and just to hear your voices. COVID has definitely impacted us in ways we can't imagine. Um, and although we wish to be here physically together, um, it's so nice to see everyone kind of behind their screens. Um, I really hope the students that are joining us today really tap into these resources. These are just a few of the STEM resources on campus and definitely definitely not all. Um, so please, like these are our allies. These are such amazing people on campus. So please connect with them. Um, I know we're at 12 o'clock, so I, I really won't take that long for EOP and EOP STEM overview. We kind of did a welcome a couple weeks ago. So you're more than welcome to kind of refer to that um, recording that we have on our website. That g gives a more thorough breakdown of EOP STEM specifically. Um, but Overall, my name is Samantha Wong. I am one of the EOP academic counselors and I also serve as the EOP STEM um, lead staff. And um, as you might know, EOP STEM sits under the umbrella of EOP where we provide um, a variety of different resources where we try to meet the holistic needs of our students, um, including academic advising, financial aid support, we do counseling. We have a very strong referral network, part of who you're seeing here in this webinar. Um, we have some grant opportunities and we have an amazing team of peer academic counselors. Um, feel free to view our website that's listed on there, Facebook, Instagram, we're always posting um, any updated opportunities, workshops, events that we're having, also like scholarship opportunities. Um, this semester, because we are doing virtual, Typically, we sit at 119 Cesar Chavez um, Student Center, but we are virtually um, having remote services this semester, and we have some programming for you that's virtual. So please look at our website for all the upcoming events. Um, similar to EOP STEM, um, EOP STEM is like a little community within EOP that's specifically serving um, STEM students who are identified as EOP, meaning those who are low income, first generation college students and historically underrepresented. Um, from here, we are hoping to really just support you. So if there's any needs that need to be met, um, any workshops that you want, this is where we're really trying to fill in those gaps where um, the students who founded EOP STEM just found there wasn't much representation in their field. So um, the big foundation 
pieces of our program are we offer community socials. Those are just times to get together, kind of like SOE was saying, of just being in community. Of course, like right now with virtual, we are trying to be creative with the ways that we're in community together, but we have a, an upcoming workshop that Maya can maybe talk a little bit more about. That's gonna be the Scribble workshop coming up, um, or not a workshop, a social. Um, we offer professional workshops, so this is kind of one of them where we're getting um, different campus resources together in the same virtual room. Um, we'll be having hopefully more coming up soon with uh, professional companies that will do more info sessions, um, recruitment sessions, just learning more about the different um, employers and different career fields for STEM. We also have our mentorship program, um, where currently I think we're serving about 50 students in this year's cohort, which is great. We're going to have another opportunity to join our mentor mentorship program in the spring. So be on the lookout for that application. Um, and then usually when we're back on campus, we hold at least one company visit per semester. So we visited um, employers like Facebook last year, Dropbox. Um, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Kaiser, so it's a variety and that's been really um, neat because students can go into the company, they usually get fed, especially if it's a tech company, they're usually um, giving a tour of the place and having a diversity panel tour with um, some of the employers in the, in the company. Um, hopefully we're going to try to be creative and do something different for the semesters that were virtual, um, but be on the lookout for those. And then we also have an iClicker rental program that's currently paused just because we're not on campus and not able to collect or hand out iClickers, but um, that iClicker rental program is great because a lot of the professors will require students to have this um, iClicker for participation and those get really costly. So we have over 500 iClickers that we are so happy to rent out every semester to students. Um, there's so much more information on our website. I really don't want to keep everyone here too long and I want to give an opportunity for any last minute questions. So just feel free to visit our website, make an appointment with me. Um, we have virtual scheduled appointments that you're welcome to access on our website. Um, so with that being said, I'll kind of hand it over to Maya, who will wrap us up um, and open up any questions for the rest of our panelists. All right. Thank you, Sam. So, yeah, that's pretty much all we have for today. Um, just to add on uh, what Sam was mentioning earlier with the community social. So EOP STEM's next event is going to be October 9th, and it's going to be uh, 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. So hopefully y'all can make it. We try and, you know, offer up as many resources as we can for y'all to kind of connect and find your community. Uh, so yeah, we just want to open it up for any last minute questions uh, for any of the speakers that we have here today. Uh, you can drop it in the chat and we will also be sending out email afterwards. So of course, if you have any, you know, other questions that we didn't get to address today, you can always reach out on your own time. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope that y'all kind of have a better idea now of what resources are available uh, for y'all remotely for STEM on campus. Yes, and thank you to all our panelists for coming out today and for being here to support. Thank you for the invite, really appreciate it.